Welcome back to this fine Thursday morning over here at Laser Engraving 911. So today, if you haven't noticed already, at about 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, my time, Xtool released their new product, their newest product, the Metal Fab, which is something I'm just, to put it lightly, extremely excited about. So I figured today, on the channel, we would watch their teaser video together and get my reaction. And uh, then we'll go over to the spec page and just pour through the specs and talk a little bit about what this machine means for me as a laser engraving business and just some of my thoughts about what this awesome new X-Tool product is going to release on the world. So let's go ahead and get into it. We'll go ahead and head on over and we'll watch this video together. Let's see what this thing is all about. Ooh. Okay, you got the welder. Ooh, some nice cutting. What? Oh, yeah, see, this right here, yes, this is exact, oh my gosh, oh. Yes, yes, wow, wow, that was a very short video. I kinda wanna unpack that really quick and just kinda scrub back through that and some certain parts. Can I just tell you the parts that I'm extremely excited about? Okay, pause, wow. Okay, so right away, we've got this right here. So this is the, the welder. So this is, this is a laser welder and fiber laser welder and a laser cutter. So that gun, that laser welding gun looks super sick, but it looks like there's also some attachments for it to turn it into a cutter, which is necessary. So we'll just scrub through this a little bit. Look at that. We've got the nice clean X-Tool user interface there. You can pick your material thickness for cutting. Very nice, can't wait to see that. Okay, here's some a little example of some different welding techniques here. Oh, and we get, did you see that? We got a little bit of laser cleaning, not too wide of a beam, but the fact that you can clean up your welds with the laser clip, oh, okay. Going to, I'm just too excited, everybody. So this is the part that excites me the most, and that is that you can dock the laser welder because really what it is, is it's just a fiber laser beam into the cutting system, the gantry, and turn that welder into a CNC metal laser cutter. I mean, boom. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like that opens up so many possibilities uh, for my existing laser engraving business, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's just keep scrubbing through here, dock it in, start cutting. Okay, now this part right here, what's going on is that they've created, I guess, some kind of algorithm that based on the file you put in, it's going to predict which parts are gonna to wanna to flip up. And this is an issue in both plasma and laser cutting where these parts can flip up and hit the head and cause a head strike. But instead of putting a sensor in the head, they said what they're doing is creating a predictive algorithm. So it, wherever it thinks there might be a flip up, it's going to jump over that to get to the next part. That way that part that flips up can't strike the head because that would screw up your cut. That's pretty cool. Boom. Okay, now here's the second camera. So it's got two cameras in it, okay? It's got the lid camera and then it's got another camera for nesting and uh, putting your cuts on scrap pieces and utilizing that. And look at that, auto nesting. So it can take a picture of a scrap piece of metal and if you've got a bunch of extra parts you need to get out of that scrap parts, you just throw them in there. It'll take a picture and figure out where it can nest those parts. Another great X-Tool invention right there. Boom. 
And now, oh man, that was it. Okay, wow, I could just watch that over and over and over. But now that we've gone through that video, let's go ahead and head over to the site and uh, see what the specs of this thing is and talk a little bit about fiber laser metal cutters and welding a little bit. And now we're over on the site. And before we go any further, I do have a special announcement, and that is that even though we're looking at all the specs together and talking about this machine, I wanted to let you all know that this Monday, I'm actually driving up to get my hands on this machine and make some projects and get my hands on it, put some time on it, build a project and learn about it hands on so I can bring that content back here to the channel for you guys and hopefully answer all your questions and show you and give you my true thoughts after using it of what this machine is gonna be like. So I'm doing that on Monday and I will be coming back with a lot more information than what we're sharing today. All right, so we're here over on the preview landing page. It is a coming soon landing page, but they did release a lot of specs. So let's quickly get through those. Let's just go you know, right to the specifications page. So I'll list a link in the description below if you wanna go over to this page and check it out and read all the specs. So right off the bat, looks like you got two flavors of laser sources. You can get the 1200 watt big boy laser source or you can get the 800 watt uh, laser source. So I'm sure there'll be different price points on this. Um, it's a fiber laser, we already talked about that. So you've got welding, cutting, and rust removal and cleaning because you can take the nozzle off and use it as a, a little micro laser cleaner, clean up some of those welds. Uh, welding mode, you've got continuous welding, spot welding, and pulse welding. That is really great, and I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I am not a welding expert by any means, but I do know that having all three of those modes, especially when it comes to laser cleaning, is going to be very handy. So here's one of the things that is awesome and why I think that this product right here is basically going to put a lot of similar cost plasma cutters just kind of to the wayside <laughs> a little bit. So this unit right here uh, can cut stainless steel, aluminum, carbon steel, titanium, nickel alloy, copper, galvanized steel, magnesium and et cetera. So <laughs> probably brass too. So one of the things uh, that plasma cutters struggle with, and I'm sure there's some people out there with plasma cutters, is they really struggle when it comes to non-ferrous metals like uh, aluminum, copper, brass, all that kind of stuff because uh, they get a lot of slag on them, the cuts aren't clean, they have blowouts, and they don't really do good at thin metals either. But this right here, the metal fab, has no problem with any of those metals getting razor sharp cuts. So I am super excited about that. Processing thickness, um, it looks like up to, for some metals, up to five millimeters thick. I saw also on the page up to 10 millimeters thick. That's probably for mild steel. Um, and then on the 800 watt, you can only go up to four millimeters thick, but I'm gonna be testing that 10 millimeters thick spec that I saw. Uh, wavelength, uh, 1080 nanometers, plus or minus 10. Um, photoelectric conversion rate, it's great, 36%. <laughs> Recommended gas, nitrogen or argon. So the argon's probably gonna be for your welding shield, so you're gonna have to pump gas through the nozzle to get clean wells, and the nitrogen is going to be used when you're cutting non-ferrous metals like stainless steel, aluminum, brass, copper. You have to have nitrogen and you need to pay attention to this because this is a cost that a lot of companies don't talk about when you're buying a laser cutter. You have to have nitrogen to get clean cuts. You can't just use compressed air or a little tiny air compressor that you use on your CO2 laser or whatever it is, you're going to need a tank of nitrogen to get clean cuts. You also might want to get a tank of oxygen for mild steel to get even cleaner cuts. That's a whole other conversation of how to obtain nitrogen and oxygen, 
but it's something to think about when you're getting a laser cutter like this. Don't forget about the cost of the gas required to get these super ultra slag free clean cuts. And I just want to say that out loud because I had an experience early on in my career where I did not calculate for that expense and it was quite expensive. So just make sure you're aware of that. Um, it's class four laser. Uh, rated machine input power is 4,500 watts. Looks like both units run off of 220, uh, 60 hertz. Uh, full load max, uh, so full load running at full power. The uh, 1,500 watt is going to, let's scroll back here. Didn't mean to do that. The 1,200 watt, excuse me, is gonna, gonna run at a total of 23 amps it's gonna draw from your socket and the 800 watts gonna draw 15 amps out of the socket. So make sure that if you get this machine that you have that 220 outlet and at least at the very minimum a 30 amp breaker attached to it. I would go with 50 just to be safe. Storage temperature, cool, cool, cool. Machine dimensions. So I'm guessing the machine dimensions uh, 28 by 12 by 20 that sounds like the actual welder itself um, it doesn't sound like the uh the the actual cnc cutting box or the uh, enclosure as well um let's see and then oh yeah so that's exactly what it is because that's all we're covering right now that's so what we just covered was the specs for the actual laser source the welder that you're going to dock into the gantry in this cutting box so now we're getting into this so CNC uh, enclosure, so cutting thickness, um, processing capabilities. Here, see, here it is, 10 millimeters. It's kind of confusing, but uh, for the 1200 watt and then eight millimeters for the 800 watt. All right, so anyway, more interesting is the cutting area. So once you dock the handle in, you're gonna have a 24 inch by 24 inch area that you can fit sheet metal into of all those metals that we talked about. I think that is very generous. I don't think it's, it's not too big, and it's definitely not too small, but two feet by two feet, I can do a lot with that. Um, it's also got pass-through capability. So if you've got a longer sheet that's no more than 24 inches wide, you can slip that in one end and it'll hang out the other end and do your cuts. Pretty cool. Uh, max working speed, 400 millimeters a second. That's probably for the thinner metals. Um, I can tell you that for the thicker metals, you're definitely gonna be running slower, but you know what? I don't think this machine was really designed for ultra high output. It's just designed for the everyday home, smaller business to be able to start fabricating, welding, and cutting metal. So I think that's respectable right there. Um, let's see. It's got your travel axis, a um, bunch of other specs here. Let's see, exhaust fan. Looks like it's got a built-in exhaust fan. That's, that's pretty sick because you definitely want to be exhausting the fumes from cutting all that metal. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'll probably add an additional exhaust fan on just to be safe. Um, class four lazy, uh, <laughs> lazy, class four laser safety. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see, what else do we got here? Total machine dimensions, here we go, 46 by 45 by 48. So not super huge, um, but you know, uh, you know, I, I, definitely enough for any kind of small shop, you're definitely gonna be able to fit this in there. Um, I'm guessing there's some kind of wire feeder for the welder as well. Um, and then they've got, got into a bunch of facts, Q and A's that you can get into here, but you know, what I really just wanted to get across today was, you know, how excited I am to really see this kind of technology come in at, I'm guessing is going to be an affordable price. A little history on my shop is I used to actually own a 1500 watt uh, CNC laser cutter with a five foot by eight foot bed. It was huge. It took three phase power. It took up a quarter of my warehouse. I went way overkill, got in way over my head. It did allow me to learn about laser cutting technology and how it works um, and how the software works. So I got a real kind of hard lesson in um, all the expenses that can come with a giant machine like that. 
and uh, the, the nitrogen costs were through the roof, so were the oxygen, not, not so bad on the oxygen, but I just bought way too much too fast. And I spent back, you know, eight years ago, I think I spent $150,000 on that machine. It was absolutely ridiculous. In the end, I had to let it go. I got it sold to another company. But <clears throat> what I really probably wanted at that time was something like this just to get in the game. And I guarantee you that this machine is going to be nowhere near the cost of that giant fiber laser cutter. So I'm really excited for them to release the cost on this. Um, I'm sure it's going to be affordable, especially with everything that this machine has to offer. So why am I so excited about this? Why did I jump on here today? Because as an existing laser engraving shop, this opens up a whole bunch of opportunities for me in my existing business. I wrote a list this morning of just some of the things that it's going to help me produce more money here at my existing laser engraving business. Um, just some ideas, but one of the main ones is now I'm able to produce my own metal tags, whether that's name plates for trophies, whether that's big stainless steel uh, plaques for customers that want it. I've had to outsource this, all these stuff forever, and now, I can just buy some stock brass, buy some stock stainless steel, buy all this stock and just laser cut these name plates, data plates, and little plaque and trophy plaques myself. Polish them up a little bit, do the engraving, because you know I already have all the engraving equipment, and I'm going to be probably offering those blanks for sale as well. Another thing is I can expand a little bit into metal fabrication services. So. I've had multiple jobs in the past where a customer has asked me if I could fabricate these little tiny flat parts out of metal and I've had to refer them somewhere else. Sometimes I get asked to fabricate stuff out of plastic, but now I can say yes. As long as it's within those specification and it's the type of metal I can cut, I can start fabricating those 2D parts and not missing out on some of those jobs. I could make custom metal business cards out of anodized aluminum sheet. I don't have to buy those anymore. I could just start laser cutting those myself. Uh, metal jewelry is another thing. If, if you're a jeweler or you like, you make metal jewelry, this machine will be able to cut uh, all those different metals. So whether it's copper, silver, uh, I'm sure that X2 will probably come out with a little docking station to hold little sheets of metal, but it should be able to cut those materials as well. But you know, any kind of metal, really, uh, if you're into the jewelry business, this might be an opportunity to get into cutting your own real, like really laser cutting, not like using a fiber laser to cut out some of the sheet metal, but like doing some larger uh, jewelry cutouts. Signage, outdoor signage, metal home art decor, you know, those really ornate metal signs that you see or sometimes that are welded onto gates at ranches. There's a whole industry of, of metal art and metal decor for homes, so that's going to be exciting. I can now tap into that. And then fabrications for small businesses and local makers, and like I said before, expanding into that industrial section where now I can offer small batch laser cut metal parts using this machine. So why don't you guys leave your comments below on what you think of everything we just talked about today. Like I said, I'm gonna be up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee this Monday, all day getting my hands on this machine. I can't wait, I'm super excited. I know they haven't released a price yet. I'm just as excited as you are, but leave a comment below on how you would use this in your shop or existing business and some ideas of how you would find this useful. So with that, I think we'll wrap it up and we'll see you around next time on Laser Engraving 911.